two wins on the bounce for Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. A cheeky little 1 0 against Burnley at Turf Moor. Stern performances from the likes of Aaron Ramsdale goal and Gabriel Magalhaes at the back. Takehiro Tomiyasu impressing. And Martin Odegaard with a fantastic free kick. So make sure to smash a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And enjoy the five things we learned from Burnley 0 Arsenal 1. The first thing that we learnt is that Aaron Ramsdale has a presence. When Arsenal spent £24 million on England international goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale in the summer, many fans, including your boy, was doubtful whether he was the right man for that sort of price tag. But thus far so, I will say quietly, Aaron Ramsdale has been proving fans like me very wrong and you know what, I could not be any happier for the man himself. In total, that means three appearances against Burnley, Norwich and West Brom and three clean sheets in a row for Aaron Ramsdale. In today's game, Ramsdale showed me a lot of good fundamentals which are promising going into the longer term, a reasons to why he is as a stance ahead of Bert Leno in the Arsenal pecking order. First things first, in terms of playing out the back, Rambo and goal today showed his passing range, long balls, short balls and always calm under pressure. He played a lovely ball over the top from a goal kick in the second half to a Bamian who should have done better. Even though he is just a goalkeeper, Aaron Ramsdale actually has an impact on the Arsenal attack and the team in general. But the most impressive and surprising part about his game today was his ability to claim crosses when it comes from corners and set pieces. Burnley themselves are the ultimate test when it comes to catching crosses as they are the definition of cross FC. So for Rambo to be catching crosses left, right and centre and being very calm in the box as well for me is a very positive indicator going into the future. And as James says here, Ramsdale is proactive and Leno was reactive. It makes a massive difference. It was just Burnley and it's only been a few games. Games. But thus far, Ramsdale has shown me the right fundamentals and the right key parts of his game to understand why he is the Arsenal number one as things stand. And I'm not going to go out and say Ramsdale is 110% a better goalkeeper than Bert Leno, but Ramsdale is a better keeper when it comes to playing at the back and even today shown positive signs when it comes to claiming crosses. That commanding presence at the back calms the entire team and defence down. Let me know your own thoughts on Aaron Ramsdale down below. Personally, I thought it was a man of the match performance and he was pretty terrific so it's things you love to see. Moving on to the second thing and that is Mikel Arteta's 4-3-3. It is the formation every single Arsenal tactician fan has been calling for Mikel Arteta to play. Bun the 4-2-3-1, forget the 3 at the back, it's all about the 4-3-3. And that is exactly what Mikel Arteta went for today. Starting a midfield free of Partey, Odegaard and smith Rowe, and a front free of Pepe, Aubameyang and Bukayo Saka. Now of course Arsenal did go on to win the game and three points is always going to be fantastic but in terms of the formation itself and how the Arsenal players settle into it I would say it was decent enough but then again there are still many holes that I could pick. Arteta on Thomas Partey he says he's the anchor he's the one who reads what is happening and makes the rest better he manages the transition he's pressing and he has a charisma. Now Thomas Partey today showed me positive signs that he can play as almost a quarterback in Arteta's system but when you have the extra attackers Odegaard and Smith Rowe they are both number 10s. Every time Burnley tried to counter, they were always getting into the back four, always full v full. One can only wander up against a better team with better players, they could hurt us and that could be very dangerous. But then again, well you have the likes of Odegaard and Smith Rowe who on paper are ball retention kings. Maybe the 4-3-3 is the go-to formation going into the future for Mikel Arteta. But what do you guys think of the formation and would you keep it going into the game against Spurs? Or with Xhaka returning, is it gonna be a 4-2-3-1? My fellow tacticians, let's have a tactical discussion down below in the comments. On to the third thing and that is the back five passes the test. We have already discussed the goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale and in my opinion his man of the match performance. But in terms of the rest of the back four as well, they were also all pretty decent. In terms of Ben White, a lot was made about his aerial ability and could he pass the Burnley test. So the fact that he won five out of nine aerial duels was a very positive factor. And I'm not saying that Benny Blanco was perfect, he did make a few mistakes and there are still certainly parts of his game that he needs to improve on but in terms of eerily up against Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes two physically rough and tough strikers Ben 
why it certainly did show that he has the capacity to become a good defender in the air. But in terms of his centre-back partner, or should I say monster, Gabriel Magalhães was on fire. And as Squawker points out here, most clearances with eight, most tackles with three, and most blocks with two, you shall not pass indeed. Mr. Magalhães was on fire, and he really did compliment Ben White pretty well. And every time Ben White would make a mistake, Mr. Magalhães was there on the scene praying and making sure nothing went past him. And what was it, 24 million pounds Arsenal paid for him? I can say it with my chest, that was an absolute bargain. And Gabriel Magalhães once again showing today why he is so important to the centre of the Arsenal defence. In terms of the right back Takehiro Tomiyasu against Burnley, we're talking 100% aerial duels won, 100% Duels won, 79 touches the most on the field, 5 recoveries, 5 clearances, 4 aerial duels won, 1 interception and 1 tackle. The fact that he won 100% of his aerial duels against Burnley, physical Brexit as Burnley, was a very impressive stat. And once again, Takahiro Tomiyasu showing that he is a defensive 1v1 monster. And even going forwards, the fact that he had the most touches on the field shows how influential he is in our build-up phase. And as LT Arsenal points out here, Tomiyasu reminds him of Aspilicueta in some ways, just seems to keep it simple and does the basics of football well. Tomiyasu is a great defender first things first, but going forwards he does have the technical security and prowess to make things happen. In terms of that back four plus the goalkeeper that is now two games in a row and both wins and both clean sheets. When it came to defensively, Burnley made zero big chances in the entire game. And as pointed out here, Burnley attempted 40 crosses against Arsenal. They only completed nine, with only six turning into shots. Overall, Arsenal handled that well. Two games, two clean sheets against two teams that Arsenal should be beating. But the back five today in the second half showed great character and desire, and most importantly, were up for the physical battle. And that has not been said about many Arsenal back fours in the past. But what do you guys make of the Arsenal back four plus the goalkeeper? And how how impressed have you guys been? Moving on to the fourth thing and that is Martin Odegaard the creative cog. Yes, the Arsenal attack wasn't the best in the first and the second half, but in the first half particularly, Martin Odegaard was showing very, very positive signs. And of course, bagged a wonderfully taken free kick on his left foot into the top left corner. It's things you love to see. And in terms of the stats, 74 touches in total, 53 passes with an 86% passing accuracy, one goal, two key passes, three long balls, one clearance, one block, and two tackles. And in terms of his free kick goal, of course, it was fantastic. And the way he struck that ball in his left foot shows to me he does have the ball striking technique and it reminded me of a certain James Madison, a player many Arsenal fans including your boy wanted to see Arsenal sign in the summer. Odegaard there and there showed he also has that in his locker. The fact that Arsenal signed him for what 30 million pounds this could prove to be a pretty decent bargain. And as Ozil Things has pointed out here people criticised Odegaard's output a lot when we were linked to Madison. Well Odegaard's last goal was today and Madison's was seven months ago. I'm not having a go at James James Madison, of course, I wanted to see Arthur sign him in the summer. But at the same time, if Odegaard can add the goals and add the assist on a more consistent basis, then we have quite a jugador on our hands, quite a player indeed. But what are your thoughts on Martin Odegaard's performance today? And let's rate it out of 10 down below in the comments. And on to the fifth and final thing, and that is an indecisive front three. The fact that Mikel Arteta went for the attacking front five of Smith Rowe, Odegaard, Pepe Saka and Aubameyang, yes, we were attacking. And with the Arsenal were getting the ball into the final third so, so many times in the position, Positions. But in terms of the final action, it simply was not there. That final pass was very much missing. As pointed out here today, the front five apart from Odegaard were horrible technically. Nobody could make a pass that wasn't either under hit or over hit, and that messed up our chances going forwards. XG won't reflect the many times that we had them on the ropes, just only for the final pass to mess it up. On the counter attack, Arsenal were getting the ball into so many dangerous positions, and all it took was one final pass from Pepe or Smith Rowe or Saka, and these these guys just simply could not make it and overall that meant that Aubameyang didn't have any chances whatsoever. Even though we won 1-0 and we were defensively solid, going forwards the Arsenal attackers have to do better because if Burnley were a better team and made a few chances, this game easily could have been a 1-1 or potentially even a 2-1 to Burnley. Arsenal attackers need to kill the game off a lot better, we have the quality, we have the players, we have the technical ability and we can certainly get the ball into dangerous positions and it's just a lack of that final action and 
the final pass. And in terms of going forwards and that front three, one could argue that Bukayo Saka is a lot better on the right wing than a left wing. I'm going to ask you guys a question for the comments. Going into the game against Spurs, would you move Saka back to the right wing and drop Pepe? But as it stands, leave it as it is and go in with a 4 3 3. Let's discuss down below. But that is the video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you have, make sure to smash a like on it and do subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. If you want to follow your boy on them social medias, then the links will be down below in the description. But that was the five things we learned in Arsenal's win against Burnley at Turf Moor 1 0. Dub FC, the back five was solid, but going forwards a lot to improve. I will see you guys next time in a bit.